We are DR Table 23, sending you this recording from the dissection room at Cardiff Uni. Our cadaver is a 39 year old male who we know died of primary cancer of the esophagus with secondary metastases in the liver. The known operation is a partial resection of the right lobe of the liver. The main signs of esophageal cancer are dysphagia and odynophagia. This has caused difficulty and pain in swallowing foods and liquids. This is often associated with anorexia as the patient loses the desire to eat. Rapid weight loss is partially due to the dysphagia but it's also associated with metabolic requirements of the cancer. Heartburn is caused by the reflux of the stomach contents into the lower esophagus. This may also be followed by vomiting due to the difficulty in keeping food down. Coughing and hiccups is often associated <coughs> with hemoptysis and hematemesis. This is the coughing up of blood, which is possibly due to the rupture of blood vessels surrounding the cancer. <coughs> the patient may experience unusual tiredness, which affects its daily routine and social life. Specific signs are often absent due to the anatomical position of the esophagus. It descends on the anterior aspect of the vertebral bodies and posterior aspect of the trachea. To confirm the diagnosis, the patient is sent for diagnostic tests. Hi. Hello. After assessing the signs and symptoms, the medical team will diagnose the patient using modern imaging techniques, such as these behind me. Could you explain them to me for use of Ronnie? Well, for esophageal cancer, many gastroenterologists will go directly to esophagoscopy. The tube is inserted down the esophagus containing fibre optic cables, which allows their doctors to look at the inside of the esophagus itself and even take a sample for biopsy for later tests. Can we use x-rays as well? Yes, we can. We can use a barium swallow, in which the patient swallows a contrast medium, which will show up any strictures in the esophagus. Did you know that our cadaver probably suffered from dysphagia? I didn't. You didn't? No. Well, he probably did. And so to get the contrast down the esophagus, we'd have to coat it in either a liquid or on a very soft food substance. For example, a marshmallow. marshmallow. <laughs> what about nuclear medicine, Ronnie? I'm glad you asked, TJ. Positron emission tomography can also be used to find metastases. The radioactive fluorodeoxyglucose is injected into the body and is taken up by cells with a high rate of metabolism, such as cancer cells. An endoscopic ultrasound can also be performed to assess the staging of the tumour as it allows different tissues of the esophageal wall to be identified. It can also help doctors locate any lymph nodes that the tumour may have spread to. That's just brilliant, Ronnie. Just brilliant. Our patient probably had a transabdominal ultrasound as well because this detects metastasis to the liver. In summary, for our cadaver, an esophagoscopy would probably have shown a blockage at the esophageal hiatus, as would a barium swallow. Tests of the biopsy were almost certainly carried out to confirm malignancy. A PET scan would have shown high metabolic activity at the lower esophagus and initially in the right lobe of the liver. CT, MRI and ultrasound would have confirmed and made clear the metastasis to the liver. Hey Ronnie, where do these go? They go over there, with the direct mate. Oh, cheers. Well, after looking at all these medical images, doctors can often have confidence in their diagnosis and treatment can finally begin. Unfortunately, many cancer patients present at a late TNM stage. This is likely for our cadaver, who was probably diagnosed at stage 4 due to the metastatic spread to the liver. However, despite the bleak prognosis, modern palliative treatment can greatly improve the patient's quality of life. 